this video we take this make it into this and then finally do this hello and welcome back to my channel yes we are in germany actually on the border between poland and germany this morning and in front of us we've obviously got a tank that we need to go and fetch now earlier this week i was given two locations on two possible tanks one in russia and this one here in germany thanks to you that voted on my community channel we are here this morning and well i've got a little bit of a surprise for all of you because inside this field there's a tiger one and i am super excited to go dig it out so without further ado let's get cracking Cool, so this is uh, definitely a Tiger 1, the Tiger 1 H1 if I'm not mistaken, looking at the cupola. This is super exciting. I wonder what condition this actual tank's in. By the looks of it, it's got a couple of holes in it, but that's fine. We can weld that all shut and get it ready for action a little bit later. Anyway, let me get the crew in to dig out. Ah, there she is and she looks like she's in pretty good shape to be honest the only problem that we've got at the moment is uh, she is lying in a bit of muck at the moment low water there so I'm gonna pump the water out clean it off quickly and then get her onto the truck oh there it is well looks like it's in good nick or semi good nick definitely can get her fixed up and ready to go uh, missing kind of some of the road wheels i see torsion bars uh, exposed over here i will get into this a little bit later as we get into the workshop just having a look at this side okay this one has got most of its wheels uh, on this side so this is great anyway we're going to ship off now to the workshop and then that's where we will assemble well, disassemble it first fix her up and get her ready for war thunder okay cool so we are back in the workshop now with this great specimen in front of us so before i carry on there is just one thing i want to note here and as you can see it's the suspension it's vastly different to that of the panzer IV, of course this is the torsion bar suspension system so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this all out and then i'm going to fix it up and i'll show you as to why this was so complex just by looking at this you can see there are four layers of wheels that was keeping this track on it's pretty insane I haven't even jumped inside yet, but it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the turret, put it on its stand, its engine over there, and I'm going to start fixing it up bit by bit. So the best thing for me to do right now is to take off these road wheels on the one side at least so I can get into these torsion bars because the problem is that every single torsion bar needs to be fixed and there's about 16 of them that runs from the front of the tank all the way to the back. Going to be a bit of a pain in the butt in all honesty if you want to actually try and fix these things. I can understand why it was so expensive from a cost perspective. <laughs> So now what we've done is we've taken off all of the arms, all of the wheels on the one side. As you can see, there are just a lot of these actual torsion bars that are sitting here that go across the tank, basically. Now, just imagine if this thing had to drive over a landmine or something, you know, it would actually bend these torsion bars uh, potentially. That could be such a nightmare, to be honest, to try and get out of the tank first and foremost and then fix it up to try and get the tank moving again. Now, obviously, some of them could be a little redundant and, you know, if it, if it gets knocked, uh, the wheels would stop working, but the tank would still go forward. But still, this is extremely, extremely complex, in, in all honesty, compared to the double leaf uh, bogey suspension. And um, I can definitely see why the Germans struggle to keep these things 
to, to keep these tanks going, to be honest. Right, so now we've got the needle file out. Thank you very much to one of the viewers that actually corrected me there. The needle file will remove all the rust for us here on this tank and allow us then to apply that coat of primer and then eventually the, the final coat. A lot of rust needs to be taken off. You can see some of the side skirts are missing. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. So we have now removed most of the rust that you can see some of the older color coming through here from the tank Which is the desert color with, that we were going to stick with Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out the sandblaster And I am going to remove all of this and put it into a bare metal state Okay, so the tank is now in its bare metal state. It's time to get that first primer coat on just to protect it from any sort of rust or weather elements. And uh, then after that, we'll put on the final coat. Great, so now that we've applied the first coat of primer, you'll notice that I've also primed up actually all of the torsion bars as well. So they all receive a final coat uh, as with the rest of the tank. So now we're going to proceed now with the final coat and I'm quite excited to see what color uh, it's going to turn out to be. have it uh she's got a very interesting desert color to be honest um something i wouldn't ex have expected uh, between the polish and german border but regardless the desert color is quite cool i mean we obviously put a nice coat of additional paint on her once we move over to war thunder but regardless um it's a very very cool tank it's in good nick now with regards to all of the other uh, components that i'm missing i've ordered them in i'm gonna actually order them in right now i'm gonna go to the computer to do that and then I'll put her completely together, test her out, and then we'll be ready for War Thunder. But uh, enough about that. I still have got the turret to fix up and the engine. Once I'm done with those two, we'll put in some uh, fuel, oil, and coolant, and then she'll be ready. So we have now got the engine, the hull and the turret all done as best as possible. Now obviously there are parts that are missing here. I'm going to order them in quickly and get the other parts repaired through the manufacturing line uh, and then just get them all assembled up and then we will be ready to go. <laughs>
Oh, there she is. That is now a complete Tiger One H1. And, uh, well, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite chuffed about how it looks. Now, without further ado, I'm going to put in some uh, diesel, some coolant and some oil. And then we're going to ship off to War Thunder. Now that I've finally put it together, I am excited to hit the battlefield. Some people don't understand on how iconic this tank actually was. It struck fear in the hearts of the Allied soldiers. But there's a key difference right now. And that key difference is that we're not sitting fighting soldiers. We're fighting other tanks. Got him! That's it. Take one of ours, I take one of yours. Coming in at 33,000 research points and 105 silver lions, the Tiger H1 is quite a costly tank nonetheless, but still gives you all the entertainment that you're looking for, especially when you're driving around that KWK 3688mm gun. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, this is the Tiger H1. Right, so there we have it, guys. Uh, an interesting build, nonetheless. You know, very complex in terms of its uh, suspension, as you can see. A lovely tank. It's iconic. It ticks all the boxes in terms of historical significance. But when it comes to War Thunder at 5.7, uh, the battle rating, it's, it's a bit mediocre. And I'll tell you why. The problem is that it doesn't have any shaped or sorry sloped armor whatsoever it literally has a flat box shape in the front as you can see it gets penetrated pretty quickly at this battle rating it's a tough tank to drive it's a bit slow it's tire rotation is also not the greatest look the tiger e in my personal opinion is just a better tank uh it survives better would i put this in my lineup look at 5.7 you don't have that many tanks to choose from so yes i would put it in my lineup would i start with this tank no would you want to know which tank i would start with look at this video here because this video has got the tank i love and still love to this day and it's perfect for this battle rating 